Hello, this is Ryan from Building Body Mind Soul here at IronMartialArtsOnline.com and today we'll cover the roundhouse shin kick where we go through. I use a pole. You don't have to use a well padded pole. You can use a heavy bag or if you're not using anything, the first lesson because you're learning to kick through something, not at it, you're always going to do a full 180 kick where you kick and you come around the other way. Never ever stop yourself midair and then reset. Always kick through if you're not kicking something. You have to remember the biggest mistake people make in the West, learning kickboxing, especially using shin, is they're not kicking through something. They kick at it, not through it. You also need to make sure you're doing the proper health maintenance, your vitamin D, calcium, zinc, magnesium. Again, vitamin D, calcium, zinc, magnesium. You can just get that in wholesome foods, nutritious diet. You don't have to go crazy with supplements. You want to make sure you do packing, shin packing, just in, look in the other videos for packing. That's something that gets missed in a lot of, um, uh, a lot of people training. You also want to make sure you're using Ditta Gel. Ditta Gel is not just an herbal Chinese hand liniment for iron palm, right? That's where it gets all its fame. You can absolutely use it on any other part of the body and you should be using it on your shins if you're tempering shins. And running, you have to do a lot of uh, distance running and get that, you know, those you know, at least I'd say 30 minute runs in and plyometric bouncing workouts or jump rope. You have to build up shin density. Really important, you can heat it at the end of a training regimen too. After your dit to jow, you can apply heat uh, rub, heat massage, a hot towel. When we do the actual kick, it's very important you remember that you are throwing it with the hook. So the hook is going to be like here when you're kicking. You're always kicking low, kicking with a hook. Why is the foot uh, hooked because you would never want to get hit on the top the laces of the foot if somebody drops an elbow or a knee or you get checked that's an easy way to break the metatarsals of the foot you can also uh, it's an easy way to lose a fight if you get hit on the top of the foot and also in the street you always would want to protect and not get hit there and have the hooking ability to pull somebody back which you can use in mixed martial arts too there's nothing wrong with hooking somebody's leg pulling back after the kick I, I don't think there's any competition I know of that wouldn't allow hooking after throwing kicks. Make sure that you turn, everybody knows about pivoting and, and having the heel of the other leg go and point in the direction of where you are kicking, but people remember you have to also pull the same side shoulder through. So it's the same side shoulder of the leg that's kicking that you're pulling that through and you're turning over the waist. So you're really following through with the kick. You'll make sure your hands stay up. So it's really important. This idea of people practicing these kicks going down like this is absolutely silly, okay? So keeping your hands up, high guard always, and falling through. But when you follow through, you wanna make sure if you're kicking a pole that it's really well padded. You have to remember kicking low is best rule of thumb. Street self-defense, the rule of the hip, never above the hip. In fact, I'd say in the street, we even lower it in our school and studio to the level of the knee or below. And even in training in mixed martial arts and competition and sport, never uh, much above the knee because the higher you go, remember, the higher the chance of somebody checking it, and it's just physics, the higher you go up, the bulkier, stronger, more dense this all is to bounce off something, whereas if you're kicking somebody and they check it and you're hitting the lower part when they check, you're gonna have, you know, you're gonna be much safer because this is a lot thinner than up here. Likewise, when you kick with your shin, you make sure you don't make the mistake many make kicking with right about here with this part, you go a little bit higher, more protection for you. So make sure you do all those things, practice coming through, actually hitting with the shin. So when you turn over, you're gonna go ahead and make sure it's your actual shin striking, not any other part, but actually the top of the shin, right here in the middle, keeping the hands up, follow through, do all those things. Uh, I usually start people 100 kicks a day. Some people work up to 500 kicks a day. Do all of the preventative measures we talked about. Most importantly, remember, kick low, follow through, keep your hands up. Have fun.